Hello, Carl here from selfsufficienthub.com and today we're going to be assembling a national beehive from a kit that you can buy online readily. Now, when you first take the kit out of the box, as you'll see, that there's quite a number of elements and I was certainly a little bit confused as to what goes where. I'm very new to this. So I spent a bit of time looking online and I couldn't find a really simple, clear instructional video so I thought I will just make my own. So I've done all the research, I'm ready to go, and now I'm gonna put it together and show you how to do the same. I bought an entire hive kit. They're available for under 100 pounds, and we're gonna be constructing all these elements. We're gonna put all that together today, and hopefully it will make it a lot easier for you to do the same. There's lots of variation in what you, get. you might have, a slightly different number of nails to go in a slightly different number of places. Where there's changes to what you may have, just use a bit of common sense and your pilot holes might be in a slightly different place to mine, you might have a slightly different type of nail, things like that, but the overall overview should be the same. The only kit you're gonna need are wood glue, hammer, and possibly, depending on the kit you've got, something to measure with and a pencil, but we'll go through that shortly. Okay, so we're gonna start with the box at the bottom, which is called the brood box, and it's where the queen lays all her eggs, which is called the brood. Now, it's composed of four sides and four connecting pieces and then each box has these rails. Now these rails are for your frames to sit on. So your frames will sit down in here. So it's really important that the top of this rail is about 11 millimetres from the top of your box. So the first thing you have to do is mark 11 mil down. Right next to the groove on all four sides. So the next thing we do is we attach our two metal rails to our two side pieces. And they just sit over like that and we make sure that we're equidistant in either end. Then, within your kit, you should have a set of nails. You should have some quite small ones, and we need eight of those. And now we're simply gonna go through the holes that have been made for us, and we're just gonna fix these in place. So there we go, our two sides with the rails fitted. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to fit our sides to the front and back and we're going to do so ensuring that the top of our metal runner there lines up with the pencil mark we made earlier of 11 millimetres from the top. So in order to fit that we're going to use some wood glue. And we're just going to put a small bead of wood glue down the groove on either side and then pop our other pieces in again taking care to make sure that our rail lines up with the mark we made which is 11 millimeters from the top and that's both sides in place now i'm going to turn it the other way up taking care to hold it all in place so that nothing moves and we've got two pre-drilled holes either side we're just gonna pop our nails into those pre-drilled holes. Then the next thing is we're gonna repeat the step with the other end. So we turn it back over, add our wood glue, and just like before, we're gonna take lots of care to make sure that our measurements line up and the top of our rail lines up with that pencil mark. Now that 11 millimetres is quite critical. These naturally create their hive so that they've got exactly the right amount of space in between the combs. So that in some areas there's exactly a gap for one bee and in other areas 
there's exactly a gap for two beads to pass each other between the frames. So if you get that spacing wrong, it can cause problems. And your bees might find that they want to redesign the hive, which is not what you want. The next thing we're going to do is put our connections across, our cross beams. And this is quite simple. You'll see there's two types. There's one with a chamfered edge and one with a straight edge. So the straight edge ones with the deeper rebate go at the top, like so. And the ones with the chamfered edge go at the bottom, like so. And then we're gonna use our nails to fasten these corners in place where again, we've got pilot holes. So there we go. That's our brood box complete. Now we're gonna repeat those steps with the super. So there you go, that's most of the construction complete, really. A lot of the other pieces come pre-assembled, but here we have our super. So this is where the honey will be stored. And then below that, our brood box. This is where the, the queen lives and does her work. So each of these rails holds frames and within those frames, you have your, your honeycomb. So these two make up the base your hive so you'll see here there are three sides and this side's open that's where your bees go in and out and then in the back there's a slot sorry I got the wrong one the one with the hole in is for the roof there's a slot that this slides into now the purpose of this is basically varroa mite control varroa mite is a parasite and it's everywhere. The, the current understanding is that basically if you have bees, you have varroa mite. So we can't eradicate them, it just can't be done. They're everywhere. So we have to mitigate against them. And this is one of the ways we do it so that our bees can't fall down through here, but the mites, when they fall off the bees, they go down through here and they can't then get back onto another bee. And then every so often, you empty it out and you can also manage how many you have and monitor your colony that way. So that's your base. This piece sits at the front. And as you can see, there's, there's two different size holes. One there, one there. And you'll basically just spin that round dependent on climate and things like that. So if it's very, very cold and the bees are less active, you wanna have the smaller hole. And then in the summer, when they're really going for it, you might want the bigger hole. So that's your base. And then on top of your base sits your brood box. And then on top of your brood box, I don't have here to show you, you have a queen excluder. And that is another mesh, but the holes are very, very specific. The bees can get up and down, except for the queen. She's that little bit bigger. And that stops the queen getting up and laying her eggs where you want nothing but honey. And then on top of that, you have your super. And this looks inside and outside very similar to the brood box. The only difference is the queen can't get in here. So here's where they store honey exclusively. And then on top of this that, is your roof. And it comes in two parts. That part sits underneath. And effectively, this is for when you want to feed your bees. So if you need to feed your bees to get them through the winter, you place whatever you're feeding them on here and the bees can come up and take it back into the hive. And then this part protects them from the weather. And there's two small vents, one either side. So that there is a completed national hive. The only thing we've got to do now is to protect this timber 
because this is pine, untreated. It's not particularly suitable in its current state to be open to the elements. It'll rot, it won't last particularly long. So we're gonna treat it with some oil. I'm gonna quickly do that now. So there you go, one national beehive, ready to go to work. As always, if you find these videos valuable, there's several ways you can support us. The easiest ones are to like it, subscribe to our channel and leave a comment down below. Please find someone else who uh, you think might be interested. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.